and welcome to Wellness Insights with Dr. Chalmers, uh, and I'm Dr. Chalmers. So today I want to talk a little bit about heart attacks and strokes. So um, lots and lots of people come in and they say, oh, I'm good. I don't have to worry about heart attacks and strokes. My cholesterol is where it's supposed to be. Um, that's pointless. Cholesterol, blood cholesterol, blood lipid levels have nothing to do with heart attack and stroke. Uh, people go, well, isn't all the placking made of cholesterol? Yeah, it is. But however much cholesterol you have in your blood is completely irrelevant to how much placking you're going to end up having. Um, if you care about your health, if you care about your, your heart attack and stroke risk, you need to go get a calcium CT. If you're working with somebody and they draw your blood and they tell you what your cholesterol is, and then they try to make any reference to heart or blood vessel health, so placking, heart attack, stroke, something like that, um, you need to not listen to them. They don't know what they're talking about. They're, they're probably trying to just sell you uh, drugs, uh, statin drugs, that type of thing. Um, quit, quit talking to them. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go get a calcium CT. A calcium CT is an x-ray of the chest that shows how much placking is in and around the chest, uh, around the arteries. If you have a specific worry about your the blood vessels and the veins and arteries in your neck or in your femur uh, down around your groin, uh, go get a Doppler ultrasound. Uh, you guys can do that pretty easily. Those aren't super expensive. You can do them with dye. You can do them all sorts of fancy ways, but start with just the normal Doppler. That'll tell you the placking that's going on in there. Now, there's a big study that came out uh, that talked about how a lot of people who had heart attacks and strokes and actually died from them had on autopsy good or normal cholesterol levels. And so people were trying to figure out, well, how does that jive? I thought that cholesterol was the thing. What actually causes placking is inflammation. So we give you a quick, quick rundown of what, what we normally really see. So you have an increase in what's called reactive oxidative stress or free radicals, okay? So those things go through the body and they beat up the blood vessel and, you know, they cause it to weep, things like tissue factor, heparin, uh, fibrinogen, things like that. Uh, sorry, fibrinogen, not heparin. And uh, what ends up happening is that any cholesterol in the area, whether you have low cholesterol in the blood, high cholesterol in the blood, whatever it is, it sticks to that chemical that comes out because, again, of the reactive octave stress. So now we start forming this patch, this, this plaque over where the damage to the blood vessel was. And as that cholesterol starts to bind, it gets stickier and the stuff starts seeping through even more. So the, the plaque uh, gets thicker and thicker and thicker over time. So instead of cutting back on the amount of cholesterol we take in um, and, or taking drugs that shut down our liver's ability to create cholesterol, which then shuts down hormone function, D3 function, CoQ10, which puts a massive, massive pressure on the heart. Um, what we should do is we should look at, one, do we have placking with calcium CT? Yes or no? And I don't, again, I don't care what your cholesterol levels are. If you do, then we need to start massively increasing oxygenation. My first choice would be hyperbaric. It's a little expensive. They're $10,000 to get one. Get one, stick it in your house, use it you know, four or five times a week. It will fix your issues over time. The other one, we can use nitrous oxide. It's a supplement, works really well. Nitrous oxide increases oxygenation throughout the body, and that oxygen will help kill and denature things. CoQ10 is another great one. Bioflavonoids, the color part of fruits. If you're a keto, you can still take them as a supplement, don't worry. So those type of things. we got to get that reactive oxidative stress, those free radicals denatured and flushed out of the body. Obviously, extra water is going to be a big piece of this. Um, if you're low on testosterone, we might want to talk about testosterone so that everything will heal. But the number one thing is we got to get the ROS out. Now, what is one of the main causes of this? Sleep apnea. If you have a sleep study and it shows that you've got apnea, don't screw around. Get a CPAP and alleviate the problem of the apnea, Decre you know, which is decreased oxygenation. So at the end of the day, if you look at yourself and you say, I am in fact worried one day about maybe having a heart attack or stroke. Cool. Go get a calcium CT. See what your number is. Even if you're not worried, go get one. They're not very expensive. Like I've seen them for anywhere from hundred to a thousand dollars. It could save your life. Go get it. Half a million people a year die from heart issues. 300,000 of them are women. Here's the fun thing. We've all heard about breast cancer. Everybody talks about breast cancer. You can't go anywhere without hearing about it at least once a week. 
40 to 50,000 women a year die from breast cancer. And we hear about it all the time. 300,000 women a year die from heart disease. How many times have you heard about a calcium CT? Most people, the first time I talk about it is the first time they've heard about it. Most of the time, a lot of these women who are quote unquote fit and healthy, they've never had a sleep study. I make them go get one and all of a sudden we find out they've got apnea. These are the things that are killing people, not cholesterol levels in your blood. So if you, if you want to worry about heart attack and stroke, calcium CT, Doppler ultrasound, pull your panels, panel, your blood panels for inflammation, not for cholesterol. And then we can kind of move on. Now here, I, I do want to throw this out because we're talking about heart attacks and strokes and cholesterol. Um, statin drugs are quite possibly the worst possible thing you can put in your body, especially for heart attacks and strokes. So let's say you, you, you don't do a calcium CT and you just decide because you have mildly high or high cholesterol that you're going to take a statin. What happens? Well, it shuts down your liver's ability to create cholesterol. However, it also shuts down your body's ability to utilize CoQ10. CoQ10 is how we make ATP. ATP is how we make the heart work. So you're cutting off the major fuel source to the heart in order to protect the heart. That makes literally zero sense to me. That's dumb. CoQ10 is also one of the most powerful antioxidants, which means it kills free radicals. Remember that reactive oxidative stress issue we were talking about? More CoQ10, less ROS. So again, if we're worried about placking, removing CoQ10 is literally the last possible thing you'd want to do, okay? It also shuts down cholesterol function. Well, what do we use cholesterol for besides placking? Hormones, all of them. Testosterone, estrogen, all of them. Well, what makes the heart heal? Testosterone, it's the healing hormone. So, all right, so we're going to decrease health of the heart the regeneration, the healing of the heart, and the healing and the regeneration of the blood vessels. And in order to increase heart health, that, that makes no sense to me. And then we go through, and what else is, do cholesterol drugs do? They screw up D3 function. Well, what does D3 do? D3 tells your body, hey, see that calcium ion? Absorb that and bring it over here. We need to make more bone out of it. Hey, see that sodium? Absorb that sodium, bring it to the heart. We need to make sure that sodium-gated channels function properly. So again, food for your heart, ions for your heart, things that make your heart function are being suppressed because you don't have D3. So by taking cholesterol drugs, we're going to decrease the testosterone to heal the heart. We're going to decrease the amount of ions that go to the heart to make it work through D3. And we're going to decrease the overall fuel supply that we need CoQ10 for. We're also going to increase free radical damage, which increases placking issues because we're removing CoQ10 as well. This is a terrible plan, guys. This is legitimately the worst plan I've ever heard in my entire life. And you know how many people come into my office feeling like trash because they're on statin drugs and I send them for a calcium CT and their calcium CT is zero, which means they have no placking at all, but they've been on statin drugs for two years? because nobody did the right test to begin with. And so now these people have to be on testosterone. They don't have a choice. They have to take tons of supplements. They've got to slowly come off their statin drugs. It's a giant, giant pain in the ass. It was created just because someone thought that cholesterol levels in the blood somehow meant that you were gonna have a heart attack or stroke. No. Now, on the other side of this, don't think for a second that because your cholesterol levels are low or good that you're not gonna have a heart attack or stroke. You might. Lots of people die every year thinking that they're safe, and they're not. So go get these studies done. And if you don't have anybody to walk you through them, get a hold of us, and I'll help walk you through them. But you should be able to find somebody to help you get through these studies. Now, the only caveat to that is if you go to your primary care physician, and you say, hey, doc, I've been with you for five years. Can you get me a calcium CT? And he goes, Sure. At the hospital, it's just one floor below us. And he sends you for calcium CT and it comes back and you have a problem. Why did he never do that before? Or she? Why didn't they do that? It's super easy. Well, I, you know, I, they were like, well, that's not what we do on a daily basis. That's not what I do as a Cairo on a daily basis. As a nutrition guy, that's not what I do on a daily basis. The reason I've chosen to do it even though it's a kind of a pain in my ass and I make no money out of it. The reason I try to do it is because I'm taking care of people. 
And I don't want to look at you and say, I've done my best to take care of you and your family and then have someone have a heart attack. And I go, probably should have calcium CT. You're like, why the hell didn't you tell me that when my dad was alive? So when people come to me and they're like, what should I do? I'll tell you. And I'm not going to care about finances. Like if something costs a hundred bucks or a hundred grand, I'm going to tell you what I think is best. You make your decisions on finances, but I'm not going to withhold something from you for whatever reason. And then have you die six months later. If I tell you, you should get a calcium CT. Like I'm telling everybody here, don't work with me, work with us. Don't care. Go get a calcium CT tomorrow. If you haven't had one. Now, if you choose not to do that and you have a heart attack and die in six months, I'm going to feel bad, but I'm not going to feel as bad. I've done my job. I've told you what to do. I've given you the information. If you're not going to take the personal responsibility to Google it and find somebody to do it for you, if you're not going to call your doc and say, doc, help me out, I don't know what to tell you. But these are critical tests to get done. Don't worry about your blood level. If your doctor's pushing you, pressuring you, trying to get you to do uh, cholesterol drugs, and you tell him you want to do a calcium CT, and he says, no, find another doctor. That's, that's all I can tell you. Don't, don't let some, like, if your calcium CT comes back bad and you got high cholesterol, you might need to be on statin drugs. I'm not telling you never on statin drugs. I'm just telling you, get a calcium CT first. And if you're zero, you've got some time, figure out how to fix the other issues first. If your cholesterol is good and your calcium CT is crap and your doctor goes, we're going to put you on some statin drugs till we figure this out. Cool. Great plan. Jump on those drugs, man. Figure it out. Fix the issue. Then come off. But don't, don't just jump on there willy nilly. Figure out what's actually going on. The calcium CT is going to be the way to do that. So um, that's my big piece. That's my soapbox on uh, cholesterol drugs, statin drugs, and uh, calcium CTs. So if you haven't gotten a calcium CT, make sure you get one. If you're on statin drugs and you haven't had a calcium CT, go tomorrow and get a calcium CT. If you have very low or little placking in the artery, you might want to talk to a cardiologist or you might want to talk to somebody about getting off those statin drugs and kind of rebuilding your life. So uh, if you guys have any other questions, hit us up, questions at chalmerswellness.com, and we'll get them all knocked out. Uh, thanks.